Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. While I absolutely love biology as a subject and I find the content really interesting, the tests are a completely different matter and I would actually say that I struggle the most to get good grades in biology tests. Not because I find the content particularly like difficult to understand or even um, difficult to remember because it is like a lot of content. I mean, with good revision and stuff like that, you know, learning the content's not the issue. The issue with me is the bloody mark schemes. Um, I'm on AQA spec and don't know if it's just AQA or just biology as an A-level subject. But yeah, it was the same with GCSE and the mark scheme is so specific and so wordy and you can completely understand the question, say exactly like the right idea, but if you don't say the exact words they want, well, you're screwed. And my light just went out, so that's good. <laughs> oh, also really, really quickly, really irrelevant, but before we start, look at my top. I just thought it was really cute. It's like suede and it says, everything has beauty, so. There you go, you, you are beautiful. Okay, so today I'm gonna kind of tell you how I personally revise for biology. And this has changed a lot since GCSE. For GCSE, I remember I had like a little notebook, pad, whatever thing, and I used to summarize my lesson notes into there. And I actually purchased the thing online, I can't remember what it's called, like My GCSE Science, that's it. It was 50 pounds and you got access to loads of different videos. And at GCSE, I personally found that really helpful. Um, I don't know if it's still around for the new spec, but I'm pretty sure it is. So if it is, have a look, see if you find that kind of thing helpful. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't understand biology content, I find that there's not many resources, especially at A-level. For GCSE, as I say, that's a good one. But yeah, at A-level, you're kind of just stuck and you've got to ask your teacher if you don't get something. <laughs> Despite the lack of resources, the first big tip I would give you, and I'd probably recommend this for like pretty much all subjects, um, print out your specification, okay? My biology teacher actually printed it out for us. Um, maybe I'll find it for you, wait, I'll find it. But yeah, she thought it was so important that she put it on yellow paper so that in our folders, it's just like, bam, here's the spec. Um, and yeah, the way that she's done it is she put like, um, she put a little tick box next to each of the like subsections saying done or like red, amber, green. And I don't know, you could do something similar if you wanted to. Main thing is to just have your specification there so that if you have a test in a chapter, you can see exactly what you need to know. And it can also be quite a good thing to um, expand upon. So say there's like, I don't know, let's, let's look at the spec. Let's give you an example. Okay, um, so. For example, on this sheet, in the respiration chapter, the first thing that the spec says you need to know is respiration produces ATP. That's like the most basic, vague thing ever. So yeah, if that was me, I'd probably like expand upon that. Like, oh, how does it produce ATP? What is the ATP used for? Where is it produced in the cell? All these random other things that you can answer for yourself. So yeah, that is definitely my first step, get your spec printed in front of you. Step two to good revision. Um, I would recommend finding whatever way works for you. But to be honest, um, I think it's kind of hard with biology to find a good revision technique, just a lot of content. So for me personally, I'm a big lover of flashcards. Although my main advice with you doing flashcards is condense everything you can, like literally everything. Um, I've really gotten into the habit now of instead of saying like higher than um, I'll put an arrow up and like ER after it so it's like higher um, little abbreviations like that or the word therefore it's like a common thing in maths and stuff that the word therefore you can just put three dots in a triangle that means therefore and little shorthand abbreviations like that are really important in your flashcards so that you can just look over them. You can fill in the abbreviations in your head so you're kind of testing yourself anyway. Also put like rapid fire questions on there. Like what is the bond between this and this? I'm also a massive fan of, what are they called? Like an anagrams? Is it an anagram? I don't actually know. Just where you take like the first uh, letter of like loads of different words and like remember that phrase. 
So I haven't really done that that recently, but I did it in AS and it's so good because I can still remember a lot of those, I, I think it is anagrams, <laughs> those anagrams from AS. So when I'm doing like revision, um, I can just recall the anagram and then like work out what I need to. For example, for the properties of water, um, we had like a list from class and I was like, there's no way I'm remembering all of these. So I came up with clempts. It sounds awful, but you know, I remember it. Things like cohesion, um, L is for like latent heat of vaporization. See, great knowledge. So I recommend coming up with things like that. My third tip, which kind of goes along with that is, um, you might have seen my revision technique video ages ago about assigning words to different things. And I kind of show in that video um, how I learned semi-conservative replication, the process on like my watch. And yeah, um, there are quite a lot of processes in biology which are quite wordy and long. So if you can find a mark scheme answer, which is likely to like come up again, um, that's a really good way to memorize a process by assigning it to things. My fourth way is if you saw my most recent revision technique video, that was about like blurting or memory mind maps or whatever you want to call it. And I do that quite frequently for biology as well. So as I said, you use prompts and headings to, um, to jog your memory and stuff like that. And you just kind of blurt out everything you can about a chapter in a set amount of time. You could actually even use your specification thing and like using those headings, like write stuff about it. I don't know, get creative. <laughs> And number five, common questions. So whether it's GCSE or A-level biology and mainly science in general, they repeat stuff like quite a lot. Less so at A-level, but the basis is kind of the same. So you can use that to your advantage and you can get the mark schemes. Ask your teacher if your school has a thing called exam pro. I didn't know it existed, but my teachers apparently have it at A-level. Um, I think they often get the choice between Caboodle or Exam Pro. I don't know, this is just what I've heard. And yeah, my teachers for biology and for chemistry have Exam Pro. And your teachers get access to loads of past paper questions from your spec. Um, and my teacher was kind enough to make like a file where we can have access to all of the past paper questions. So yeah, even if you can't do that, just go online, look up all the past papers that you can, go through them and identify questions that are similar. Or another method which I've tried, which is quite useful, is printing off only the mark schemes. And then you go through the mark scheme and kind of work out what the question could be from only looking at the answers. It's like a backwards way to really test your knowledge. I'd highlight any common answers or common questions and make a note of them on like a sheet, write down any common questions that you can see being asked a lot, or equally add them to your flashcards and your revision material, like some questions that you've seen in a past paper thing. And that brings me on to my sixth thing, which is bloody past paper questions. Um, biology is something that really, really requires you to do practice. And I always try and do the summary questions in the textbook after each lesson and each sub chapter. But yeah, you really need to be getting um, like proper past paper questions and giving them a go. Like I personally just do them and straight away kind of look at the mark scheme and use the mark scheme because I think that's the most important thing. I mean, often when I'm doing these past paper questions for the first time, I quite literally get like two marks out of 16 or something. Um, it's just really bad. It's so annoying. I just can't get like what they're asking me for, like the words. And I definitely, I do know, like the more I do, the better it gets. But yeah, don't be deterred if you do badly when you're doing the questions, because ultimately it is all practice and uh, it'll help you whenever you do any sort of little exams or tests and ultimately your big exams. And do questions across the year. Don't you dare leave it until like exam season. You will screw yourself over. Do as many as you can now. Print off mark schemes, look at the similarities, look at common questions, practice application, and also try and give yourself only a minute and a half, like max per mark. I think it's a minute and a quarter, a minute and a quarter per mark um, as like a rough guideline so that you're not spending too long per question. I feel like I've forgotten something. Um, but I hope that helped you out and yeah, I'll probably do more videos, like more specific videos 
on revision for biology, so like approaching questions and past papers and that sort of thing. Yeah, for A-level. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with any revision you're doing. And if you're not doing revision, then mm, I don't know, good luck with doing any homework. See you later.